Hey everybody, I'm Seth Myers. This week we've been turning the top of our show over to late night writer Amber Ruffin. Every evening she has told us stories of her encounters with the police. Here once again is Amber. The last two days I've told stories about my run-ins with the cops. Today I'm going to tell you a story about a run-in with the cops. Okay, I was living in Chicago and my friend Anthony had just left my house. Now, he goes out the door, across the porch, down the stairs, gets on his bike and rides away. I shut the door, I go inside, I change into my pajamas, and when I come out of my room, I see that he has left his wallet. So I call him, he comes back to get it. I step out onto the porch with no shoes in my pajamas, and instead of walking to the end of the porch and down the stairs, I just reach over the side of the porch to give him his wallet back. So he rides up on his bicycle and just lets his bicycle fall and then reaches up to get his wallet. Now, at that moment, I'm reaching down and he's reaching up. Uh, a cop car pulls up, it flashes its lights. The cop gets out and she's like, hold it right there. We got you. <laughs> like, okay. Now, everything she says to us, she says with her hand on her gun. Now, I'm terrified because while I'm a black lady, Anthony is a black man and this cop is a tiny little white lady. Now, I'm scared, Anthony's scared. I've had a lot of run-ins with the cops at this point. And isn't it hilarious that when people say run-ins with the cops, they mean they got caught doing something. But when I say it, I just mean being a person that they bother. Okay, so this cop says, why were you guys running from the police? And we're like, we're not, I'm not running anywhere. I live here. And she's like, okay. Meanwhile, I'm like, bitch, I have no shoes on. I don't say that. I say, I'm in my pajamas with no shoes on. And she goes, let me see both your IDs. I go, okay, but to get my ID, I have to go in the house. Okay. And she's like, fine. So I go in the house. And um, the whole time I'm in the house, she's asking Anthony a million questions. So I come up, I give her my ID. She says, this address is from Nebraska. And she's right. I go, oh yeah, I don't have a new uh, Chicago ID yet. And she goes, well then I need proof you live here. Go get some mail. Now this is where the story takes a turn and I can't describe it exactly except to say, now she has unsnapped that thing that holds your gun in place and is holding on to her gun tighter. So I go inside and I'm freaking out because she's gonna shoot my friend Anthony for just being bigger than her. So I go in and I um, tear up the house looking for a piece of mail with my name on it, but I've just moved there so I don't really have any. So I go, I get the mail, I come out and for some reason she has calmed down. I give her the mail, she looks at the mail and she looks at us and she goes, okay, well, from now on, when I tell you to stop, you stop. Now remember, she's never told us to stop anything. And I look at Anthony like, oh my God, how are you gonna handle this cop lying on us? And he looks at me and he looks at the cop and he goes, okay. And I look at him and I go, okay. And we live to get harassed another day because that's the kind of thing you have to do to stay alive when you're black. You have to let the police lie to you at your own house. That's it. That's my story. Uh, we used to open this show with fun jokes, but for the last three days, we've opened this show with stories about me getting mistreated by the cops. And if you're tired of hearing these stories, do something!